I look like an absolute wreck. This cannot be happening. Like, I'm like, how can we like cancel this somehow? I got the news. We were five minutes away. I had a feeling you'd come back and save me. What's up, guys? And welcome back to my channel where I am filming quite possibly the most exciting video I have ever filmed, our engagement story, which I did not see this night coming. Like, I had no idea, as you will hear about and see by the fact that I looked like a troll, but... Finally, after three and a half years, we're engaged. <laughs> Had to suss her out for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, three and a half. That's kind of up there. You got to do your due diligence and it took you three and a half years to pass all the tests. <laughs> and as you can see by the ring, guys, I eventually passed. And if this ring is any indication, I pass with flying colors. He did such a good job picking out the ring. I want to get to that whole story and all of it. And... I don't even know where to begin. I mean, okay, first of all, I just feel like we need to just give a general introduction. I know you guys have heard the story so many times, but for anyone who's new, how we met. My mom and you worked together and my mom introduced us. So she asked if you were seeing anybody and I don't know exactly what she said. If it was initially like my son is single or I know someone that's single. And then... Well, no, she said I know someone that's single. Oh, and she said son. I was like, cause I was like, oh yeah, I am single. Like who's asking? Not that you were asking. You definitely weren't. For those who don't know, he ignored me for seven months. And then the next email, she was like, it's my son. And I was like, Ugh. because the odds of it working out were so slim and I was like, this is going to be so awkward. I mean, I guess I don't know factually how successful blind dates are, but I can't imagine blind dates are enormously successful percentage wise. So my mom has tried to introduce me to many people and I've not typically gone for it just because it's like <laughs> your mom, right? Like no one, like if there's any guys out here watching, you don't go for your, like your mom's suggestion. It's just <laughs> not a thing. I'd been single at that point maybe about two, three years-ish, I don't, I don't know the exact dates. So I'm sure my mom was finally ready for me to settle down and find a nice young lady. So she was trying to take things into her own hands, as my mom does a lot. Uh, <laughs> love you, mom. She made the introduction, Clancy texted me. It was Thanksgiving of 2017, and we agreed to meet up when I was coming back up to Dayton. Because she was living in Dayton at the time. And he's from Dayton. Yeah, so and I was, was going up there for things. Yeah. And long story short, he never texted me. Never texted me. I waited. I actually straightened my hair that day. Because I was, you know, getting ready for the date without actually putting on makeup. Never got a text. Never heard from him again. Seven months later, I was like, why not just text that guy, Zach? And the rest is history. So she stalked me for seven months. No. Is how the story goes. She was looking me up online, creeping on my Facebook and stuff. Well, no, Zach like did not have social media before I met him. So I showed up like I, really not knowing what you were going to look like. You can't tell based on one photo. Well, no. She was in Cincinnati seven months later. We don't have to get into the whole details, but texted me. I was out of town and then we met up the next weekend. Three and a half years later, here we are. All right, so now first let's start off with, I know a lot of people are gonna ask like, did you see it coming? Did you think you were gonna get proposed to? Basically, we this is something we had been talking about since six months in. Like we had talked about, you actually sent me a text when you were intoxicated one time. You probably don't even remember. I don't even know if we've ever discussed this, but this is before you said I love you to me. You sent me a text being like, well, I'm trying to spend the rest of my life with you. And I was like, oh my gosh. But I knew you were drunk, so I was like, I don't think so. You it didn't count. It. Some people date today, but no. I don't think we were dating just a date. No, like I totally was on the same page, and I'm like, ooh, he just went for the gold. <laughs> so we had been talking about this getting married, spending the rest of our lives together for a long, 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 long time. And we had actually looked at rings in April of this year. And that's what made me realize what shape I wanted because I originally wanted a square or like princess or cushion cut, one of those. And when I went to look at rings, oval. Like oval is just exactly what I wanted. So he knew what I wanted. He didn't just randomly come up with this. And I'm really happy you were pushing to look at rings. Like I was kind of like- Well, yeah, because sure. I feel like at that point in our relationship, we had talked about it some half like we've all, we brought it up in conversation, but we never actually had hard set like what are we thinking, the set and the other. And I had like tried to bring up like maybe going to look at rings, and that wasn't pushing. I wasn't like let's go, let's go, let's go. So I, I could have done a better job, but I had said it a few times, and we just never did. So then it finally got to the point where I'm like, if I'm gonna buy you a ring, you understand we have to go look at like it's not like a maybe just because I'm the type of person as we've established in all of our gifts. I don't want to like go on a whim. The ring she wears the rest of her life, I, we need to get this right. So yeah. she wanted a cushion cut with a halo to begin with. And I mean, if 
thank goodness we went to look because it was the complete opposite. We got an oval with no halo is what she ended up liking the best on her finger. But I didn't want to pick it out and then have him get the same exact one. I just wanted to show you what I liked and then you do it. Like to give, you guys know I love surprises. I wanted some element of surprise. So we looked in April and then nothing happened. Nothing happened. What was up? I mean, seriously, like by, I would say, I don't know, like maybe like October, November, I was just like, so like, um, <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> or what's not happening actually. Like I actually did begin to wonder. <laughs> she was misbehaving for a bit, so <laughs> we had to make sure she got right back on the on the right path. But, but really, she was. Uh, no, I wasn't. <laughs> even better than ever. So I always wanted to do it in New York, where Clancy's from. So with her family there, her best friend, and I'd always just envisioned that's where I would do it. So it's not that like I had to wait for New York clearly, but like I was wanting to. And then when it turned out that her family was gonna come here for the holidays and my family's here, I mean, it, it worked out better that way. Just to have our, both families there. So it's just the timing worked out. And I made the decision that Christmas Eve was the day for it. Okay, yeah. So how did you decide Christmas Eve? Because he had been hinting about this engagement for the past few weeks, like to the point <laughs> where I'm like, what is this man doing? Like I, <laughs> knew it was probably gonna come sometime around Christmas because what are the hints? I mean, first he was, he made the hint like, oh, I definitely spent a lot more on you this Christmas. And I'm just like, way to give it away. The next <laughs> hint. Yeah, so she totally saw it coming. Okay, but I didn't see it coming that night. I thought it was gonna be like Christmas or the day after. Yeah, you say one thing and the other's true. No, but like seriously, you but said- I, So hold on. So I was. <laughs> I mean, and I, I, even I was telling my, the family, because the family was like, oh, do we have to hide and surprise? Like, no, because Clancy, my sweet, sweet Whenever you Clancy, say that, I know something bad's coming. It's so awkward, where I was just like, I don't want this. Like, when I asked her to be my girlfriend, it was awkward. When we had our first kiss, it was awkward. Like, just, it was just, I'm so tired of things being awkward. <laughs> It was just like, I wanted her to see it coming. I, 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 I saw it could have been like a, a nice like fun, like reaction, but it was still awkward. Oh, we're going to get to that. But another hint, he kept telling me it was going to be the best Christmas ever. Like in like a joking, we're like, oh, is this going to be the best Christmas ever? <laughs> so I had a feeling it was going to be coming Christmas. And like to me, I was hoping so much. But what I didn't know, like I had no idea if he had gotten a ring yet. And he had. I think you got it, what, at the end of November? When I made the decision that that was my timeline. I was already a little late to the game. There was no indication, there was no hint. Okay, so Christmas Eve comes, I have no idea. As you guys know, I work a crazy schedule, so I was working that day, 3.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Came home and then was gonna go take my nap, but my mom and I were trying to figure out exactly what we were gonna do for dinner that night because Christmas Eve can be crazy, a lot of restaurants aren't even open, and we just wanted to order food in, which I like, <laughs> kind of had my heart set on. I was so excited to order in, which obviously, well, I don't know if it's obvious, but it would have ruined all of Zach's plans because he wanted to go out to dinner after the big moment. To celebrate. Yeah. So I had gotten reservations already at Moorline Lager House, which is Clancy's favorite restaurant in town at like eight o'clock. And that was specifically because timeline wise, that would be about the soonest we could get there with Clancy snap, getting ready, then we, go to the proposal and then we go to dinner. So her and her family did not love the idea of eating at eight o'clock that night, which, which they're early eaters. They're so. early eaters and I actually didn't really care. I just warned him, I'm like, they do not go, they are like five o'clock. They're like, where's the food? I'm sorry guys, but you are very annoying with that. <laughs> <laughs> and I had known that and I just figured they would just leave it be. We've told them uh, the reservations are made, like this is one night, like, and I, it was my fault as well because I was planning on telling them, I did tell them, of my plans the day of. They didn't know any of the plans. I mean, they had no idea that the reservation had meaning to it. So for no reason at all would they think changing it would be that big of a deal, which and it, it's not, but it was. So when I heard that that was just what they were doing, it was in the middle of a shout. I got a client was like, hey, my mom's gonna order some food from Taste of Belgium. Is this cool? Like, what do you want? And it was what a huge, I, big order, like, like a family order. size thing. Yeah. And she had to order it right then. So that's when I was like, oh gosh, like, because it was going to be like, seriously, 30 minutes later is what I was going to text them to come over to tell them of my plans when Clancy was sleeping. So the timeline was just like rushed. I had to run, like, go grab my phone when I was soaking wet to text Clancy's mom to just say like, hey, like, please do not order any food. I've got slight 
a slight surprise. <laughs> that was, we were cracking up at that text after. A uh, slight surprise. Plan for later to please just don't do anything. And she texted me back. She's like, are you cooking? And I was like, no, I'm not cooking. But just like, I, I need to talk to you. <laughs> like, I'm going to, can I come to talk to you and Tommy? And she was kidding this. when she said well, that. Oh, well, of course. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think she, she picked up she knew. on what was happening. They, but yeah. they all knew. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it doesn't take a detective to, to, like, to figure It's so funny, though. My mom is just like me. My dad and my brother are very similar to each other. They're just, if you know them, if you've seen them in the vlogs, you know what I mean. I just had a goddamn wedding I have to go to now. Now go away and do some, annoy some else. Zach texts my mom this, and they basically know, like, oh my gosh, like, is Clancy about to get proposed to? My mom's trying to be all, like, excited. And that's exactly what I would have done if I were her. Like, I need to talk to someone about it. And my dad and my brother are like, well, we'll find out in, like, 20 minutes. Like, and they just didn't want to talk about <laughs> at all they're like there's no point in speculating i'd eat lunch so i ate a quick lunch and then by that time her parents had actually gone to neil's and they weren't at the hotel i was like oh great another person i've got to like present this ring to like now every member of her family i drove over to neil's uh well i mean i walked in and then everybody was like sitting on the couch just staring at me like get to it so i was like well i'll just jump right in and i just pulled out the ring and i showed them and i just said hey like this is my slight surprise that i've got planned for later Hence why we've got reservations. And my dad, I already told Zach this, like, don't ask him for permission. It's just not the way my family is. It's not the way my dad is. I guess I wouldn't say family, just my dad. Not the type to, like, want permission or want a big, long chat. Ask me what, like, you know, I don't know. When you're, like, you know, you're 18, you're... Got you out of the house? Yeah, the whole like asking the dad for the marriage thing. Like it's cool if you want to do it, but it kind of doesn't really make sense because it's not like my dad has a say. So yes, but like when I was there, I said like, I'm here basically telling you these plans. I'd love to have your blessings is how I said it. So yeah, I mean, that's how it was. Your mom was excited. I mean, your dad and brother kind of just chilled and sat there. So I told them the plans. I let them know that I was going to put your mom in a group text with mine, just with where to go, the location, the time, things of that nature. Which, uh, that's like me doing a drum roll because we haven't even talked about like where Zach decided to do this. Because I always said I don't want it to be public, like I don't want anyone to see it happen. And I never said this, we never talked about it, but like I am so happy that both of our families were there because we're both really close with our families. And oh my gosh, like it just made it so perfect that they were there. So, okay, how did you figure out what location you wanted to propose? I thought of a million different ways. So Clancy's favorite park we like go to, to eat lunch, different things, Alms Park. And I had thought of that early on, like is that, that could be a place. And then I thought of a hundred different things that I could try to do. And then I just kept coming back to doing it there and then getting reservations at more aligned her, her favorite restaurant. For any guys trying to figure out like where to do it, like you're gonna think of a million different things, but I didn't go like over and beyond, like I didn't have like flowers laid out or anything like that, but it was just trying to think of like where like we've had like sentimental moments or where your favorite part like places are. Yeah, that's where we landed on. And unfortunately it was late at night basically. and. It was very dark. So, okay, so we'll get to that. So I wake up from my nap. Normally when I wake up from my naps on Friday, which Zachary here knows, I don't get ready. I don't even brush my hair. I mean, I take a shower because I want to be clean, but I don't put on a stitch of makeup. I don't do anything to get ready. I actually just put on the same pajama sweater thing that I slept in, like a New York like sweatshirt type thing leggings, Ugg boots, and then a blue coat over it. And it was like, perfect. Like, I just don't feel like getting ready. And it's funny because when I got out of my shower and Zach walked past me, he's like, well, can't wear sweatpants tonight. Like, God, I put on jeans. And I guess that was like his like little, little hint. I gave you one chance to pick it up. I didn't pick it up. And I said, <laughs> well, I'm wearing comfy clothes tonight. But you knew that in order for it to be a surprise, like. Well, yeah, I couldn't say anything. Clancy and I go to dinner and sweats all the time. 95, yeah. 99. Like, when like even if it's a decent restaurant, we don't care. We never went to the bar and sweats. There'd I... be no reason for me to say, hey, Clance, why don't you go put some makeup oh and nicer gosh. clothes on? Like, you guys could speculate all you want on different things you could say, whatever. There's no, there's nothing. Nothing. I've, th I've thought through it all. I've, I've spent hours thinking like, what could be a line? There, there's nothing good that would be out for us. I mean, maybe other people have things that they say, or hey, let's maybe dress up tonight, or hey, That's your family's us. in town, maybe let's take some pictures later, whatever. There's nothing. There's nothing I could have said that wouldn't have been just absolute red flags, obvious. And I should have known that this is what I would look like during my proposal because 
I almost never get dressed up, right? Like, unless I'm on the news, but like, I'm just a very comfy clothes, so I should have known, but I didn't. And we left for what I thought was a 7 p.m. reservation. Zach told me he moved up the reservation, which spoiler alert, he didn't. That was just so I would leave early. As we were walking to the car, he kind of like ran ahead of me a little bit and got the car door for me. Do you remember that? Yeah, but like, that's our, we joke about that a lot. It wasn't a joke. I mean, I, I, there was a spring in your step, but I, yeah, I didn't pick up on it really. <laughs> well, no, cause we do it. So Clancy and I have a thing where, and she does it to me as well, <laughs> where occasionally we run in front of the other person and open the door for like, yeah, it's, yes. it's a joke. So there, that, that wasn't a tell. I wasn't suspecting anything. I don't know. And then I still was not even expecting anything because trust me guys, if I was suspecting even a little bit, there would have been makeup on my face. I don't like... Like, there just, there would have been. I still wasn't expecting anything, as Zach told me, we're gonna take the side streets to Moreline, which, looking back on it, when have we ever taken the side streets and why would we do that? And I opened my mouth to say that, but then I was like, eh, like, I don't wanna, like, question Zach's, like, it, it, he made the decision and I don't want him to, like, be, like, mad that I'm, like, <laughs> being unnecessarily annoying, so I was just like, okay. At this point, still had zero clue. Then at one point, he was in the car and your mom was texting you telling you about the disaster <laughs> at Alms Park, which we'll talk about in a second. And I actually was like, Zach, don't, like I always tell him, like, don't text and drive. And, well, yeah, you should not text and drive. Okay, yeah, but I mean, this was like a, oh, it just a popped, light? yeah, it just yeah. popped up. So meanwhile, at Alms Park, they were realizing there was not a single light. Like, it was just pitch black. And, and one great thing Zach did, which I'm so happy he did, he hired a professional photographer. So I'd been out to the park a few times, obviously. Even like recently to like look at it. Just <laughs> Scouting to it out. Yeah, to like see where the lights are. So I'd been out there, not in the pitch black, but like to see like where the lights are. There's plenty of them. I knew it was gonna be dark, but like I figured it'd be fine. And we had a photographer. When my parents got there, I just texted my mom like, is it pitch black? And she read it as it's pitch black. <laughs> Really? And she goes, yeah, I know, honey. It's really dark here or something <laughs> like <laughs> is what her response was. So basically that. that was her answering my question anyways. So I was like expletive in my head, just blank, like, <laughs> like, oh no. But again, the plan was the plan. I figured that some of the lamps would still be on or whatever. And she basically then texted me saying like, nothing <laughs> is lit up besides the building. Like the venue building, I don't, need, like, I don't, there's probably a word for it, but I can't think of what it would be. And right now I'm gonna flash on the screen where Zach wanted to propose. And it's this beautiful overlook. And that was Zach's game plan up until the very last minute when the photographer arrived. And she told Zach, like, if you go there and I'm photographing you from like, I don't know how many yards it would be. It would have to have been like 50, I don't know, 100 yards away. We won't see you guys. Like I won't be able to capture it. So last minute, he had to just completely change his game plan, which kind of makes sense as to why things were a little awkward. I got the news that none of those lamps were on as we were we were we were five minutes away. That is how quickly I had to change in my head that we were just going to do it at the building. So the plan was, and she'll flash the photos that they would be in the building because there's a second story that overlooks the lookout area, which would be about 50 to 60 yards away that overlooks the river. And they would see it perfectly. We'd have our own kind of intimate moment. Photographer would be able to shoot us and, and it would all be great. And Zach wanted us to be far away so like they wouldn't hear what he says. Yeah, I wanted it. Yeah, I wanted the, the actual moment to be just between us. But then when we got there, it wasn't. She'll show you the building and we basically had to just do it right in front of it. So like everybody was like above us, looking down on us and the photographer, who was great. She was basically five feet away, like in the bushes. Like, to, Well, like, that's why it was funny. When we made this turn into the park, like that's when I was just like, oh my God, he's proposing. Like he's 100% proposing, what's going on? So, and I literally was just like, Zach, where are we going? <laughs> and this is when he just got so nervous. You had like spit and you're like, you know when you get nervous and you're just like, nothing, nothing. <laughs> we're just making a, a pit stop. Like you just turned into a different human. And you were like, we're just making a pit stop. And I'm like, why are we making a pit stop, Zach? And you were like, nothing. And I'm just like, well, clearly I know everything now and I don't know what to do with this information. And I'm like, where are my parents? Are they at dinner? Cause like, I am such a punctual person that the first thing that crosses my mind is like, we're gonna be late to the reservation. I don't even remember what you said. I think you said like, yeah, they're at dinner or something. Meanwhile, we start pulling into this pitch black park. All I see are both of our parents drive white SUVs, different kinds. And I just see my mom's, I recognize the license plate. And then I see Zach's dad's car, like a big, <laughs> what is it? It's a Tahoe. A big Tahoe. And I'm like, oh my God, like they are at this park. <laughs> and to be honest, 
what was going through my mind wasn't like, oh my God, like I'm about to get proposed to. All I'm thinking is, oh my gosh, I am wearing my pajamas right now and I haven't brushed my hair and I look like an absolute wreck. This cannot be happening. Like, I'm like, can we like cancel this somehow? Like, I'm like, <laughs> this, this just can't be happening right now. I never picture myself getting proposed to looking like such a mess and feeling like a mess because I just woken up from my nap. Like, I was just like, oh my goodness. And it was just like such an awkward few minutes of like us parking. We just got out of the car and like walking up and I'm just like, Zach, like what's going on? And that's when you started like asking, you're like, do you love me? And I was like, yes. And you were like, do you want to be with me? Like you're just making sure. <laughs> well, I was just like, sure. I was like, do you trust me? I was like, just come on. Oh, you did say that. <laughs> I just got like a flashback. Well, yeah, I made a joke. Like, are you about to kill me? Cause it was just pitch black and he was leading me to just this pitch black location. And I'm like, what could possibly be happening? And then we walk by like the little castle venue thing. And I see this light flash, which was the photographer, but I didn't know what was happening. I didn't, I didn't think he would hire a professional photographer, which was so sweet. And he's like, Say hi to Patty. <laughs> I'm like, what? Because she was hiding in the bushes, but well, I can't see her. She was just right there. Oh, I saw her. Like, and I'm just because you didn't know what was happening, so like I knew where to look, I guess, for like people. Meanwhile, like, I saw your mom. Well, okay. Saw... Meanwhile, our parents are all trying to be so secret. They're like ducking. They said they were like on the floor, like on their stomachs, but like that was so unnecessary because. I already saw their cars and not only that i wasn't looking up and it was so dark i would not have been able to see them anyway so like it's so funny that they like did all that and it was so cute they actually all met up for a little drink before like a little pre-party celebration and then zach walked me to like he like, that's the thing like because you didn't even know where to go you're like i guess we can stop here well yeah because it wasn't where i planned to do it so we just kind of i just made it up i was like trying to like see where patty was i was like i looked up i saw like our family all like creeping over looking over the ledge and i was like i guess this works so then i stopped and we kind of stood there like just kind of like face to face and i said a couple things got down on a knee and helped okay. the question well and the thing is it's because everyone was there like it was not the most like romantic of words like ever which i don't blame you for like i agree well yeah it wasn't all he said was well, we've been going out long enough, so I figured it was time. And I was like, it wasn't that bad, but it wasn't as lovey-dovey as I had pictured because I was going to do it 60 yards away from any other human. It wasn't as lovey-dovey as I had written up in my head, but sometimes you have to make audibles. Yeah, you made an audible, but guys, no one ever teaches you how to like accept a proposal <laughs> and me. I literally didn't know what to do, so I... I, I, I realized after like after looking at the pictures i'm like okay like yeah like that's not what you're supposed to do i grabbed the box like the whole i try or i think you stopped me but i tried yeah. to grab the whole box from him and i said thank you <laughs> But it was good. We had your fa our families were there, and we rode off into the darkness. I was gonna say sunset. <laughs> the darkness. <laughs> it was so dark. But it's so funny because like looking back on it, I'm actually so glad it happened the way it did because like it was just like so us. It wouldn't have been me if I was wearing five inch heels and was done up to the nines on a random Friday night. And a lot of people do know before they're getting proposed to. There are actually like a lot of videos on YouTube of like they they vlog like getting ready for their proposal that they've like figured out, but Zach knew like I did not want to know. I wanted it to be a surprise and it was just so perfect. And then we went out to dinner with our parents and Neil and now you're stuck with me. Actually, I keep saying that, but technically we could call off the engagement. Would it be the first time someone does it? No, definitely not. <laughs> Let's hope not. And now you guys have to get ready for a wedding planning content. We have no yeah. idea, by the way. Like, we'll talk about this in a future vlog. We'll also talk more about, like, the ring and all of that. The good, good, the st What did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> the details. But, yeah, we, uh, we have no idea when we're having this thing. So, we're just excited that finally he decided to pop the question after three and a half years together. By the way, I Googled it. The average relationship is less than three and a half years. So, like, we're on the the longer end of that thing. No, nah, I mean, at our age, I think three years is about normal. But then, yeah, I mean, that's, some people do it super quick. I mean, I guess if you know, you know. I just had to suss you out more. No, you knew though. No, I mean, I think we always figured. Just honestly, I think it does, ends up then eventually just getting to a, like a point where it's like, it's like almost obvious that like you're gonna stay together. Like I said earlier, I was just waiting for us to go to New York, which was more silly probably than anything, but I could have like asked her parents to come out 
specifically for or fly out but i never just i never did just because i that just seemed unnecessary so i think it's timing and how you want to do it and, and everything else there's no right way to do it it's just more trying to figure out what's most important to you guys so, oh now you're an expert well that's just how i did it and she said yes so there you go <laughs> take, take it or leave it well guys be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more random vlogs and content and who the heck knows what this next year is going to be in our lives and you got anything else to say up thumb oh yeah up <laughs> thumb be sure to like it as most normal humans say all the way from long island now happy in ohio she has the most amazing chocolate oatmeal recipe i know hey that's clancy burke yeah you heard it here you heard it here first up and out of my Cincinnati News reporting Behind the scenes from work Here's Clancy Burke